The Journey of Christianity Throughout India, the Seven and a Half Churches of St. Thomas. St. Thomas traveled from Israel to India, and upon reaching India, he preached about the gospel of Jesus Christ to the locals. He also performed miracles, he taught people and shared with the needy. But one of his greater acts was planting churches. We will be looking at them today, the seven and a half churches planted by St. Thomas. St. Thomas began his journey from Israel and traveled along the Red Sea to southern India. He traveled across the Malabar coast and ended up in Kodungalur around 52 AD. This is where he established seven and a half churches. They were all planted in the states of current day Kerala and Tamil Nadu, and most of these churches were built near Jewish and Buddhist communities. There were seven churches planted by St. Thomas. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to complete one, and he left that one incomplete. That church became the half church that we speak about. The seven churches were planted at Kodungulur, Kolam, Palayur, Kotakayo, Kokamangalam, Nirnam, and Nilaka, of which the church at Kodungulur is considered the first church. The river Periyar splits in two at the town of Alba, and it branches past through part of Kodungulur and into the sea. Kodungulur is actually located along the sea coast. If you have been reading some ancient Roman documents, then here's a small tip. According to some Roman documents, Kodungulur is also known as Muchiri. When St. Thomas first came to Kodungalur, he baptized the king of Kodungalur and his family, along with 40 other Jews. And he built a church near Muslim and Buddhist settlements where he preached. Some ask this question, how did he preach to the locals, even though they spoke different languages? Well, there are two theories. The first theory states that the Jews that were living there learned the locals' language. And since St. Thomas himself was a Jew, he was able to preach to the Jews, and the Jews translated whatever he taught and preached. The second theory states that foreign merchants who spoke Aramaic came to India, and the locals were able to learn this language. St. Thomas, who also spoke Aramaic, was then able to directly communicate to the locals and preach the gospel to them. The Marthama Pontifical Shrine, or the, the church that was settled in Kodungalur, it is said to be one of the first churches planted by St. Thomas around 52 AD. This makes it one of the oldest churches in history. This also shows that India was actually one of the first countries to receive the gospel. The church was built near the banks of the river Periyar, and much later was destroyed. We don't know how it was destroyed or when it was destroyed. But according to some speculations, since the church was built near the river Periyar, the Periyar river flooded and destroyed the church. This church was then rebuilt on a land that measures about 35,000 square feet. The church was built with a fusion of two different architectural styles, the Indian and Persian style, or the Indo-Persian style of architecture. The shrine is not only famous because it is one of the first churches in the world, but it's also famous because it contains the right arm bone of St. Thomas himself. This part of his remain was bought all the way from Ortona, Italy. This was a slight introduction to the seven churches planted by St. Thomas. We will look into the second and third churches in the next part of this series in the journey of Christianity throughout India. For now, it has been Acid George Wilson, and I'll see you later.